Good evening, brave awakened ones. Lady V here, Veronica of HigherRealmHolistics.com. Empath, intuitive, spiritual counselor, guide, author. You can go to my website for my merch, for meditations, to purchase meditations, to purchase my webinars, Higher Realm Magic uh, spells, Higher Alchemy when you're ready. Okay, I just had to drop this little bit of knowledge on you guys right now, okay? I just got back from my uh, my late night bike, biking. Beautiful day today, not a single chemtrail in the sky. It's 80 degrees out there, it's stunning. So I went for a bike ride around the old neighborhood and this just came up to my head. <clears throat> As I was riding along, just looking at the stars, and literally it was like, some people really need to hear this because it's sabotaging them, okay? So here's a bit of relationship advice from Lady V, all right? It's the whole concept of free love. It's the whole concept of being, just giving it away just giving it away, I should say. It doesn't have to do with sex. It has to do with your affection, special affection that is meant for sacred unions, as you see right here, sacred unions. And this sacred union is not, just, not just between a man and a woman. It, it could be between, between parents and their children between siblings, between friends, question for you. Because I know I'm going to get plenty of people out there, you know, with their bleeding hearts saying, oh, but, you know, we're all the same. We should all treat everybody the same. Doesn't matter if they're you're in a relationship with them or not, what type of relationship. You give the same type of attention and love to everybody. Love is love, yes. I have unconditional divine love for everyone, even those who, quote, unquote, has done me wrong, hurt me, whatever. But, but there's only one person I call the sweetest pumpkins of all pumpkins. And that's my son. Now I've called my son pumpkin for a very long time since he was little, but how I got to be the sweetest pumpkin of all pumpkins, that is exactly how I must address him if I'm using that term pumpkin with him. It's because he was like 10 years old, fourth grade. He had one of his little friends over, this adorable little black British boy. He was very tiny for his age. He was so darn cute with the thickest British accent. He was from the countryside. I forgot which part of uh, Britain he was from. And I called him Pumpkin once. My son pulled me aside very quiet. said, Mom, can I talk to you? Took me by my arm. I was like, okay, what's going on? And he's like, you know, those really sweet names that you call me all the time. I'm like, sure. He's like, could you please not call anybody else those names? It really hurts me because that's just for us. That's what makes it special because you just call me pumpkin. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I will never do that again. But then it happened again. This time he was a teenager. And I referred to my niece as Pumpkin in front of him. My oldest niece, who's 18 now. They're a few years apart and like three years apart. And she's actually the original Pumpkin, which she knows because when she was a few months old, my sister dressed her up as a Pumpkin for Halloween. So from that day, we called her Pumpkin once in a while. And um, I referred to her as Pumpkin and my son overheard. And he's like, Ugh. he's like, Mom, why are you calling her Pumpkin? That's my special name. Now my niece, always being mouthy from three months old, said, no, I'm the original Pumpkin. And pulled out the picture of her dress as a pumpkin and said, this is why I'm the original Pumpkin. And I said, well, he's like, is that true? I was like, yes, she is the original pumpkin. But remember, you're the sweetest of all pumpkins now. 
He's like, yeah, okay. And he was okay with that. Now my daughter, she's banana. Anna banana. Not allowed to call anybody else Anna banana. That shows the depth of the relationship. Words do matter. Actions do matter. Now, when your social media, when somebody looks at your social media and they can't tell who your wife is, who your husband is, who your girlfriend is, who your boyfriend is, they can't tell because every other person you're hugging up on and you're referring to his darling sweetheart, the most beautiful, the most this, the most that, it cheapens you. It cheapens your words. It cheapens your acts, your actions. It really does. You go home to that person at night and you refer to them as, oh, you look beautiful tonight. It's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like you just said that like 20 other women. Or you look handsome tonight. Yeah, well, it, yeah, you just posted that to that other guy that, you know, on social media, whatever. It, it means it cheapens it. It gets rid of this, the sacred union part. It really does. It affects it. When every other picture in your social media looks like this to the point where people think that, you know, you are, uh, your couples with somebody, with, uh, somebody that could be your daughter or somebody that could be your son, because every other picture looks like that. And it's not saved for that person who's supposed to be special in your life. That sacred union partner or your child even. I mean, even your kid, if your kid went on your social media or saw that every other child you saw, you call them the same nickname, you refer to them. Like imagine if I kept calling all my son's friends pumpkins and I kept, or sweetest pumpkin. I started calling them the sweetest pumpkins and I started hugging up on all of them like I did my son. I did the same thing to my, my daughter, to all her friends. That would take away the specialness. You know, the exclusivity. Everyone likes to feel that they're exclusive. It has nothing to do with envy. It has nothing to do with jealousy. It has to do with feeling special to that one person. Knowing that you have that special tie, that special something. But if you go around on your social media and every freaking picture looks like this, for every woman or man that you meet, you're hugging up on everybody and you're calling them all these special names and people literally think that you're with that person. It's a bit confusing for your mate, isn't it? Just saying. It's a bit confusing, isn't it? I remember my narcissist ex-husband used to be an insane flirt, ridiculous flirt. He was so flirtatious. I was eight months pregnant with my son, with our son, I should say. And I was doing an art show. He would come with me once in a while for the art shows, especially when I was pregnant to help me. He wouldn't stay all the time, but he stayed this time. It was a nice day and was packed and I really needed the help. Um, and in New York City, I did a lot of art shows in New York City every weekend. And um, he went off, I, I, you know, I went off to the ladies room. I came back and I saw him talking to an art, another artist in the booth next door. And then he was like, okay, he went off to the men's room. And then she's like, this was an older Caucasian lady. She hands me a phone number and she was like, oh, I finally found the number of my daughter. Can you please give it to your partner for me? I was like, for what? Well, you know, I just thought, you know, they'd make a nice couple or something. And I was like, um, that's my husband. And she's like, excuse me? I said, my husband, the father of my children, that, that's my husband. And she's like, oh, 
I didn't realize that. And I said, can I ask you a question? Be honest with me. Because I've done many shows with this woman. I really liked her. She's from the Midwest somewhere. Honest woman. At the time, I'll say older. She was in her 40s. I was only in my 20s at the time. So, um, yeah, look who I'm looking old, talking older to. Right now, I'm that age, right? So, I was like, what made you think that he wasn't my husband? She, Her face turned red. She was so embarrassed. I said, don't be embarrassed. It's okay. She's like, well, you know, I noticed he was very flirtatious and he was talking to me and he asked to see pictures of my daughter. He said she was so beautiful. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, that's how flirtatious. And my husband would come at me and be like, what's the big deal? You don't, you don't need me to say those things to you. You're already my wife. You already know that. You don't need me to treat you that way. You're already my wife. That's a narcissistic way to do it. Now, I'm not saying every person that behaves in that manner is narcissistic, but that's a narcissistic trait. And it's a way, it's it's a control thing. Number one, it shows that you have low self-esteem because you need that type of attention from every person that you're with. Even as a parent, like my mom, my mom treated every other kid that she met better than she treated me and my siblings. And it was hurtful. She had pet names for them. She treated them so much better. And we were like, damn. And you know, I, I don't want to go through the whole bullshit with my mom with all the names that she used to refer, refer me and my older sister as because we're dark. Um, you know, we're mixed. So we, we came out dark and my younger sister came out very fair. Everyone thinks she's, uh, you know, Caucasian, Italian mostly. So my mother treated us extremely different. We weren't even, my younger sister says it was like I wasn't raised in the same house as you guys. Literally, that that's how different it was. Um, so it was hurtful to see that, like, wow, our mother treats everybody else different, better than she treats us, different, more affectionate. So I have to say is, you know, keep your kisses for the one that you love. It's not that you can't kiss other people, but how are you going to be kissing them the same way that you kiss the one that you say you're supposed to be in a sacred union with? You know, or you're supposed to have special relationship with? You know, uh, save your kissy emojis for the one that you're supposed to be sending your kisses to. That's why I can't stand emojis. I had someone who used to talk to me in emojis and I used to say, I don't talk emoji. First of all, I'm a grown ass woman, so I don't talk emoji. But, you know, it's like if that person's special to you, if they mean something special, then you you treat them that way. You know, you you give out your affection that way. Don't have people guessing who's your partner when they look at your uh, when they look at your social media because every other person you you you're pushing up against. Seriously, to put it plainly and bluntly, you know. Imagine if it, you know your social media and your kids looking at your social media and everyone's thinking somebody else is their kid is your kid except them because you're so busy being so affectionate and uh, to every to every other child except your own kid. You know what I'm saying, guys? Just saying. This is just a just saying from Lady V. Just saying. Just calling some stuff out there that I, I find very perplexing. Um, yeah. Okay. Lady V out. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Visit higherrealmholistics.com. <laughs> Bye.